see about the test what actually we are going to do we have prepped the patient now the patient is ready what we are going to do we are going to have three different tests a clomotor test which has to uh, do with your eye movements okay and then positioning test and then caloric test okay we are going to do three tests three uh, kinds of test to understand completely about the vestibular status and we will do all these things only if the patient is complaining of vertigo and has nystagmus okay if there is no nystagmus there is no point in doing all these tests okay so we will do only if the patient has nystagmus and complains of vertigo so how is the room set up now we have fit the goggles now okay along with this the electrode placement in the eng or the goggle placement in the vng we will have a light bar okay a light bar kind of thing in front of the patient uh, close to 4 feet away from the patient okay so what do we do we will ask the patient to sit in the eng as well as vng we will start the aplomotor test with sitting position okay then we will ask the patient to look at the dots appearing this is kind of uh, a moving led light okay the led light will keep moving left and right and the patient has to track it okay so that is your aplomotor test okay in the whole of aplomotor test we will use that light bar without light bar there is no aplomotor test okay so in the light bar based on how the dots are moving and how we make the dots move uh will decide what test we are doing okay so first we have to do calibration without calibration no test starts if there is no calibration there is less reliability on the report okay so we will first do our calibration so what is calibration because when we ask the patient to sit and we ask them to look at one direction the uh, the patient is going to look at the dot the dot may be moving at particular degrees you know if it's moving little bit we are going to move our eye uh, 10 degrees maybe and then 20 degrees and then 30 degrees and we don't go above the 30 degrees okay so either we are going to check 30 degrees right and 30 degrees left okay so then what okay just a minute okay so in the calibration we will ask the patient to track it why because depending on the fitting of the glasses and depending on the distance that the patient is sitting um and depending on the height all those things are variables which exactly when i make the dot move 10 degrees i cannot expect the patient to turn in the 10 degrees okay so to check if i present 10 degrees the patient's eyeball really move 10 degrees i need calibration okay because each individual uh, is different and uh, when we make them sit it will be different okay so we will start with calibration calibration is like a smooth movement it is going to move right and left we just have to keep looking at it the most important thing in both of uh, both eng and vng is that no head movement is allowed in oculomotor test the head has to be looking at this straight there is no movement of head if the head moves then we are going to have a wrong response okay so we have to just use our eyes to track those dots okay so then what happens if the calibration is not good if the eye is move pro not move properly this is how we are going to get the response if you look here it's a perfect sine wave right but the calibration is not good here you see all those things coming okay if you look here this is the tracing this is what the tracing is which means what is recorded from the eye okay and this is the signal which is presented through the light so the light the stimulus and the response is overlap 
here it was all good okay it's a perfect sign here just a little bit of uh, uh, movement at this position okay but here we have a lot of deviations there is no proper calibration okay so why what 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 actually is happening here the patient is trying to correct this missing the patient is not following the dots properly so instruction has to be repeated that's it that's the solution for this okay then we will start with our first test the gaze stability the gaze stability is the most simple one what has to be done is to see a dot continuously for two minutes that's it the the dot will move in 10 degrees in 20 degrees and 30 degrees and stop there for two two uh, minutes okay two minutes not seconds two minutes and the patient has to keep looking at it okay why are we doing this we are checking if the eye was i i can able to fixate on an object for a longer duration or it is it is that you no know, it starts more uh, sh uh, you know, um, like shaking or it start moving up and down there is any rapid movement okay so we will be asking the patient to fixate on an object like the gazing gazing means looking continuously right so the, uh, we are asking the patient to fixate our eye on the dot and wait for it okay so the dot will be in different degrees the degrees i mean how much the eyeball moves the looking straight is zero looking little right or little left is your 10 degrees 20 degrees 30 degrees likewise okay so if there is any problem which means if the patient cannot fixate on the object then it means he may have a problem with the brainstem or cerebellar dysfunction okay most of this oculomotor test if they are abnormal they have uh, things to do with the central problem about brainstem because this integration happens in the central level it doesn't happen in the peripheral peripheral level it's not in the uh, semicircular canals or the otolith organs it has to do with uh, central things okay so if a patient is not able to gaze uh, if to stabilize his gaze then he may have problem in the brainstem or cerebellum okay the next one is the smooth pursuit okay smooth means it's going to be very smooth it's not going to be abrupt okay pursuit means following so we are going to see a dot in the bar light bar moving to the right and left just like how we did calibration right we did calibration but one difference between the calibration and the smooth pursuit is the calibration is in the same velocity i mean a uh, same frequency but the frequency of the movement of the light will change in the smooth pursuit which means it will first go slowly and then go a little fast and then go more fast like that okay so if the patient cannot track it the patient just have to track it he has to see if the this target is moving on the right side then he will move his eyeball to the right side if it's moving on the left side then he will move his uh, eyeball towards the left side okay if he is having abnormal abnormality in this test then it is understood that he may have a problem in the vestibular cerebellar uh, integration problem dysfunction oh, excuse my uh, mistake there it is not dus it is dys okay then this is how it looks like okay the first one this one is your signal and what you have seen above is your smooth pursuit response okay this is good this is a good tracking okay this is again a good tracking but look at this it first started slowly which is 0.2 hertz and then it started little fast which is 0.4 hertz and then it started more faster than 0.6 hertz okay what do i mean by hertz see if i'm turning okay if i'm turning from one point to the other point in one second it means that movement is one hertz 
okay the movement i have made imagine i'm i'm moving the head from center to my right side okay from one point to the other point if i move that okay and from center point to the movement i have made i have moved that for one second it is one hertz now okay if i have moved from one direction one place one point to the other point okay in less than one second okay which means in 500 millisecond i have moved then it becomes your 0.5 that means the movement was quick i was fast if the frequency reduces it means that i am making a quick move okay which means if i'm doing a fast move then i have moved this in less than seconds right so it means faster if it is more the frequency is more like 2 3 it means i have moved my head very slowly okay from one point to the other point it took 5 seconds for me to move then imagine how slow i will be moving okay so we will do in the smooth pursuit is in different frequencies the next one is saccade test saccade means rapid movement smooth pursuit was slowly it was moving now it is not going to slowly move it is just going to appear okay it will be in the center first then it will fade then again it will appear in right side we will look right okay then it will fade then it will appear in left side then we will look at left then it will it will it will be off then it will look it will be it will you know pop up in some other degrees we will look at it okay so uh, one example is that uh, i told you the crow imagine we are sitting and a crow is making sound immediately we look at it okay so that is our saccade and when the crow and, and the crow flies okay so we will be tracking it slowly you're tracking it is moving from left to right slowly we are looking at it okay so this is our smooth pursuit okay in previously we saw an example of race car last class so that is our smooth pursuit we are looking at it okay that's no saccade in saccade test we will check for three things one is accuracy one is velocity and then the latency okay from one point to the other point i am looking how accurate was i when i looked at it which means uh, we already know what is an undershoot and overshoot which means i will uh, give an uh, example with hand imagine i need to pick up my phone okay if i exactly take my hand and keep it on the phone that is accurate okay if my hand doesn't reach till cell phone if i try to touch it before it then it is undershoot okay before the target if i go touch after the phone it is overshoot okay which means my intention was to take the phone but my hand is not coordinating with my intention okay it is either trying to take what is before the phone or after the phone like away from the phone it means undershoot and overshoot likewise i am trying to see something okay i am trying to see something if i see exactly that is my accuracy if i see little away from the target it is overshoot if i see before the target it is undershoot let's imagine my point my my led light is glowing at 30 degrees okay if i see in 40 degree that is overshoot which is away from the uh, too much of right side is overshoot if i see before it which is if i see at uh, 20 degrees it is undershoot because may i didn't move properly okay then the velocity how much time did it take okay how fast did my i move from the one point to the other because one first stimulus was in the center and the second stimulus is on the right side in the 30 degree 
me. Now I have to look from center to the right side. My eyeball has to move from center to right side. How fast did my eyeball move? Is my velocity. Latency is how fast did I respond? Okay. My first stimulus is fading. Okay. And the second stimulus has come. Before it faded, and I have to start my stimulus, I have to start my movement from center to right side. To start an action, how, how long does it take is my latency. Okay. So I think uh, if you're confused, hold on. We will see about the, uh, we will see a little graph. I think you will try to understand this. If you still have doubt, I can clear it. So you're looking at a saccadic movement. Okay. And you have a formula to see how to calculate accuracy. I think accuracy is not a problem. Okay. Uh, imagine you are standing in zero degrees. Okay. So uh, if you are looking at something and from there it is moving in another direction from right 10 degrees to left 10 degrees. Okay. So this is your signal. The straight line is your signal. The dots, all those things are our responses. Okay. I'm looking at this. And the signal suddenly changed to the left. But it took some time for me to change my movement. Okay. I'm looking here and I need to turn here. So this gap here, this is my latency. It took few milliseconds for me after the stimulus has changed from here to here it took few milliseconds for me to start the eye movement because all motor movements don't happen immediately right you have to get the signal you have to activate the muscle so it will be little delay you will have a activation delay okay so that's your latency okay then what happens we had accuracy here, how fast I'm accurate, how, how uh, accurate I'm looking at the dot. And then I, saw, I spoke about the velocity, uh, latency, how, uh, how much time did it took to start the movement and then the velocity. Okay. Velocity means how fast did I move? Okay. From this point to this point, how fast did I come? Okay. That means your slope uh, velocity of the circuit okay i will have another example here see this graph says about velocity this graph says about the accuracy this graph says about the latency and all those shaded regions are normative data okay so anything within this thing is abnormal if their point goes into the shaded area, it is abnormal. So we have all age-based normatives. If it's a child, then this will come down. So it, the, uh, the area for the responses will be huge because the child will make mistakes, right? So based on the normative data, we have these things, okay? The dark shaded regions. Now let's go into the graph. Imagine this is your signal, that, uh, the straight thing. Okay, so we're looking at straight and suddenly the point changes, but it takes this much time for you to respond. And after few milliseconds only, your eye moves to this place. Okay, so that's what it is. And it is continuous. Okay, this is about your accuracy. There's a problem with the accuracy. This one is your undershoot, the other one is your overshoot. Okay. The stimulus from here, it has changed here. But the eye took some time for it to respond, but still it has not reached here. It has undershoot. And then it corrected with another second. Okay. Your eye is looking here and the stimulus changes. After some time, your eye also is moving, but it, it didn't fixate on the object. 
your object is here your dot is here but the i didn't see exactly the dot it is undershoot because it's undershoot it made corrective measures again to the dot look at the second one the dot is here but the i somewhere looking here it's overshoot too much of deviation and then it make a corrective measure to bring it back to the point okay any doubt in the circuit i think circuit is little uh, too much information the last one of the oclomata test is optokinetic see optokinetics optokinetic is a uh, similar to this smooth uh, pursuit you have to follow it okay we will have few light bar, uh, dots keep moving okay we have to fixate on that okay uh, one example is our uh, again race we have so much of race cars going like this zoom 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 okay every time it is moving your eye will try to follow it okay from center fixing the car till it disappears then the other car is coming so what does the eye do suddenly it brings back and checks the other car until it moves it will track the car and again another car comes so imagine what will happen your eye will be moving like tick 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 okay so that is your optokinetic test the dots will keep moving the reflective eye movement reflexive eye movement uh, in the form of jerk nystagmus when you are trying to look at something like that your uh, eye will feel like it is having a nystagmus but in fact it is not nystagmus okay is it clear what is optokinetic test so what happens when there is a car moving from there here okay so imagine this is a dot from here i have a light bar from here it is going to move like this okay so what do i do it's keep moving like this so i keep tracking it one dot goes other dot comes other dot comes other dot comes so i will keep looking at it until it disappears okay so my eye will go like this suddenly back to normal then like this back to normal so sudden movement this is a reflexive movement okay so i say i will move i will move like this then this this like this okay okay so in the oclomotor test we first started with gaze test we have to fix on an object for 2 minutes and then we had smooth pursuit we have to follow a freely moving dot and then we had circuits sudden movement sudden change of uh, dots and then we had optokinetic again it's kind of a sm uh, smooth pursuit but you will have repeated movement of it okay so it will create kind of a reflex action okay any doubt in the oclomotor test